Do you think we'll ever see another moment like GameStop in retail investing? I think what GameStop showed is that um, retail investors are a really, really important part of the markets and a constituency that can't be ignored. And a big part of that is due to the impact of Robinhood and the mission. Robinhood was founded with the goal of democratizing finance. Its easy to use app made trading free and spurred a generation of retail investors to jump into stocks, including GameStop. GameStop shares absolutely going nuts. The weapon of choice for these new traders are platforms like Robinhood, but since then, Robinhood has lost roughly half of its active users. Now, CEO Vlad Tenev is focused on growing Robinhood into something more than just a trading app. WSJ caught up with him at the company's headquarters to hear how he hopes to make Robinhood the most trusted name in finance. What was the moment you knew that you created something that changed how everyday people invest? End of 2019, when basically every single discount brokerage in quick succession lowered their commissions to zero and essentially replicated our model. And at the time, I, I remember being a little bit nervous. You know, you, you get all these questions. What does this mean for the company? Like, we really have to up our game to continue to differentiate with our customers. What would you say is the next frontier for democratizing finance? We've done a great job with trading and self-directed investing. Now the, the next area we're tackling is retirement. And so we're the first to offer a 1% match in an individual retirement account. And it's a big part of our journey from helping customers get started investing to managing all of their finances and providing service across all of their financial needs. A lot of the investors I talk to do still associate Robinhood with GameStop and the trading restrictions during that period. So what do you say to customers who lost trust in Robinhood during that time? I, I understand um, that perception, but what I point to is the amazing progress Robinhood has made and continues to make. Robinhood has gone from an app that blasted confetti after a user's first trade to a company offering retirement accounts and 4.9% interest on uninvested cash for premium subscribers. The disruptive brokerage is looking more like a traditional finance firm. And with its acquisition of credit card startup X1 this year, Robinhood has a credit card in the works. We think credit's a huge opportunity. There are so many customers that are either underserved or not adequately served with their credit needs these days. And I think Robinhood can play a huge role there in democratizing that space and make it easier and a much better experience to, to offer those products. This pivot to new offerings is part of the company's strategy to attract and hold onto users in this high rate environment. Trading stocks isn't as popular as it used to be. Investors now have other options for good returns. One of the really interesting things about the investing business is it does tend to be cyclical with growth coming in waves. In times where interest rates are low, like they were in, in 2020 and in 2021, you see a lot of interest in investing in the market. And in other times, there's just less interest. And so what we look at there is how can we improve our product and service and continue to innovate for our traders and investors with things like 24-hour market, which makes us the first in the U.S. to offer round-the-clock trading for single-name stocks. While getting into retirement accounts looks more traditional, 24-hour market is anything but. It's a big shift in how users can trade stocks like Amazon, Apple, and Tesla. With 24-hour trading, it just seemed ludicrous to me that, you know, it's 2023 and investing in the most liquid, deepest markets in the world, the U.S. capital markets, is still tied to U.S. East Coast working hours. Everything is, is electronic elsewhere and services are available when people need them. And, and yet investing is kind of this exception. And when we looked into it, we realized that there's no reason that it had to be this way. We could work with counterparties. We could build the technology to make that better. And 24-hour market, which launched a couple of months ago, is kind of the first step in that direction. So I think it's still very early to tell what kind of impact it'll have market-wide. And I do believe in not too long, you'll see it become an industry standard, just like commission-free trading has become.
If that does become the industry standard, are there any risks you see involved? One thing that you have to remember is we already have experience with assets that trade round the clock. If you look at the cryptocurrency markets, they trade 24-7 worldwide. And, you know, we've, we've been offering customers access to to crypto on the platform since 2018. Speaking of crypto, it's obviously been a hot topic in the regulatory space over the last year. As one of the first brokerages to offer crypto, are you committed to offering crypto to US customers moving forward? Yeah, and I think crypto is is here to stay. There's definitely been a, a lack of regulatory clarity, and I think we're gonna continue to work with lawmakers and, and regulators to push forward there. Shares of Robinhood have had a nice run up this year, but they're still down about 80% from their record high from 2021. Do you think there's anything the market is underappreciating about Robinhood? Over a long time period, companies are valued on earnings growth and the stock price tends to, to track that. It might not happen for various reasons in the short term. What we can continue to do is serve our customers, improve our products, grow market share, but there's always more to do. Do you still think Robinhood is an underdog in the financial services industry? I do. Robinhood's been able to accomplish quite a bit over the past 10 years since we got the idea for it, but it's still a very young company. And I do believe, you know, 10 years from now, looking back to where we are today, we'll really appreciate that we're still in the early stages of Robinhood and, and there's so much to do. Even as Tenev looks ahead, a reminder of Robinhood's association with the GameStop craze is out in theaters this month. That stock is GameStop. Have you seen the movie Dumb Money about the GameStop saga in which you are a character in the movie? I have not seen it. Having a movie created that has Robin Hood featured is, I think, a really important testament to the impact we've had. But I have to remember, the movie's fiction, and uh, nobody sort of talked to us about it. So I think uh, I'm expecting it to be a, a fictionalized account, and uh, hopefully some of it's true.